Do thoughts create behavior? Are thoughts the reason why you behave the way that you do? And can the thoughts that other people have about you change your behavior? <laughs> it's an interesting concept and certainly something worth thinking about. It's something that I wrote about in my book, From Sabotage to Success. And it's also what I wrote in my book was based on something that I learned about many years ago, a very interesting experiment, shall we say. One of many, but one of those ones that stuck with me and I put it in my book, I'm gonna share it with you today. Now, in a previous video, I read from this same section of the book and I talked about my experience of being locked in druggy prison for more than 40 years. Yes, there are certain members of my family who still have me in druggy prison because in the 80s, I used drugs. <laughs> yes, I did. I used drugs like many of us did in the 80s. Heroin, cocaine, LSD, all of them more than once. And for the longest time after I got sober, I still had people looking at me and going, is she on drugs? <laughs> is she, she's really sober? And there was a lot of suspicion thrown in my direction. It was very uncomfortable, very awkward, and in some cases made me to not want to be around certain people. But I want to use this example to, and the example in my book to tie into the power of beliefs, how it ties in with what we think about ourselves and also what other people think about us. Maybe you've heard about a documentary or a experiment called A Class Divided with Jane Elliott. I wrote about it in my book, From Sabotage to Success, and I'm gonna read what I wrote, which is a small summary of that study. Interesting research has shown time and again that our perceptions of ourselves affect our behavior. In the film, Class Divided, Jane Elliott demonstrates a lesson plan she created to teach her first grade students why discrimination was wrong. She divided the class into two categories, students with blue eyes and students with brown eyes. For the next two days, each group took turns wearing a special felt collar. The group who wore the felt collar was discriminated against for one day. They were not allowed to drink out of the water fountain and could not play on the playground with other children. They were chosen last for group activities and given less attention in the classroom. It did not take long to notice a difference between the two groups where there had been none prior to the experiment. The group with the felt collars were slower and had more behavior problems. The group without the felt collars appeared smarter and were better behaved. When the experiment ended, the teacher discussed it with the children. They all reported hating to wear the felt collar and said they felt stupid when they wore them and smart when they didn't. They also reported feeling superior to the group who wore felt collars. This experiment shows not only the effects of discrimination, but also how our self-concept affects our behavior. I think that that experiment could be applied to a lot of different groups of people. <laughs> and I'm not going to get myself all snarled up in making this uh, political or any other type of thing, but I think you can use your imagination about this whole felt collar idea. And I believe you can find a little snippet of this doc 
I'll call it a documentary for lack of a better word, uh, to show uh, this experiment in action. Now, it's really old. I think it was taped in the 50s, maybe. Probably not because it was in color. But nonetheless, it's old. And so one of the first things you might say is, that's too old, that doesn't apply to now. Well, again, take a look around and see what the power of a label can do to a person. See what happens when the perception of a person is impacted. It could be by something as simple as a t-shirt that they're wearing or a hairstyle that they have, or your knowledge that they belong to some particular group. So it's, it kind of spills into this idea of self-fulfilling prophecy. But for me right now, I don't necessarily want to get deeply into um, the group aspect of it, although I will go back and forth with the group aspect because I think it's super important, especially the group called Your Family. Yes, that group is really powerful in impacting your perceptions. But I also want to talk about your own personal ability to filter out or hone in on certain aspects of beliefs about yourself. I mean, let's face it, you've been through a lot of years of life at this point and you've seen a lot of major changes take place in society all around you and chances are you've made significant changes in your life. Like I told you, I used to be in druggy prison. <laughs> yes, I used some hard drugs in the 80s. I don't use hard drugs anymore. But still, there could be certain people, even if they hear and know that I did that 40 years ago, who would still put me in a category. And so imagine the amounts of cat categories and limitations that we're placing on people as we compound these infractions upon them year after year. And then based on what I'm reading, what I just read to you right now, imagine what that can do to the individual if they believe that about themselves. Super important. Let's face it, we're not going to be able to control the way other people think of us. It's possible that I will be in druggy prison until the day I die. It's possible that people will look down on me until the day that I die. Even if I hadn't used heroin for 70 years of my life and I was 88 years old, I could still be in druggy prison in somebody's mind. As an adult, it's up to me to let myself out of druggy prison. And you might be in some kind of prison yourself. Maybe it's the prison of getting a divorce or having an affair, or maybe it's the prison of being a smoker or giving up a baby for adoption or uh, list could go on and on you know sometimes those things that we do to ourselves in our own mind we could be mad at ourselves for things that other people would think were so small i listed some really really big things here but uh yours could be that um well mike came and he was like super sweet to me and he asked me out on a date and i told him no and that was 45 years ago and i wish i never would have done that it just goes to show what a bad person i really am i always do the wrong thing you know it could be anything it could be fill in the blanks and if you feel bold and you're you're just having a sense of humor about it, feel free to put something in the comments. You know, what, what prison are you in that you've been in for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years? And it's really just a self-imposed prison. But the part that's not funny is that now because you're in that prison, you are holding yourself back from real life experiences today and not just experiences as far as uh, 
getting out and doing something, but the experience of having a feeling of joy, a feeling of peace, a feeling of contentment in your life that really, I mean, for us who are Gen Xers, Gen Xers, I think many of us would say that that's really important, if not priceless. Uh, we've already bought lots of things and we know that none of them made us happy. We've already accomplished a lot of things and we already know that none of them made us happy. And many of us know that really at, at the bottom of all of it, what we want is to feel good in our own skin. And so I want that for myself. I want that for you. That's part of why I do some of the work that I do and I'm like exposing myself in my druggy prison because I might be able to hide it from a lot of people probably if I wanted to, but um, no, it's not that important anymore. And there is also something important about feeling like you made a difference in somebody else's life. So for me, I do that in a variety of ways and I share what I've learned. Part of what I've learned along the way is hypnosis. I'll share more about that in future videos. If there's any part of this particular video or a video I've done in the past that is specifically meaningful to you, let me know. And uh, also if you have any questions or if you just want to expand a little bit more on the topic, let me know. All right, thanks for watching and I will be back. Bye for now.